After a general election, the Queen invites the leader of the winning party, that's the party with the majority of MPs, to form a government. It maintains this majority by controlling which way their MPs vote with what's affectionately known as the party whip. Voting against your party, especially on a three-line whip, is often an invitation to discuss your career development opportunities. People are less willing to understand why there is such a thing as a party whip. And I think that's a great shame, uh, because you know, I, I don't think you can have a functioning democracy without parties. And therein lies the problem, uh, because really since the birth of the party system at the end of the 19th century, what, we, what we've seen is that the, the independence, the independent mindedness of backbench members of parties has slowly ebbed away classic role of members of parliament that on behalf of our constituents we, we control government. Um, now, unhappily, that has, uh, that has fallen by the wayside. Uh, and you, you cannot have a functioning government without having what is broadly based part, a party whip. I think the party political machines um, have, uh, have achieved a power um, which, is, which is unhealthy. Prime ministers have arrogated to themselves a power of patronage. So those two things colliding together have meant that members of parliament have either emasculated themselves or been uh, emasculated. And on top of that, we have the phenomenon of the, of the professional politician. When I first came into this place, and it's even truer um, in the 50s and before the Second World War, there were lots of people in this house who were people of major consequence outside their party because either they had been very successful in the professions or because they were successful businessmen or because they had an appeal to the wider public through their own oratory and status. What we now have got increasingly is a parliament of apparatchiks, people who work up their way through the party hierarchy and frankly have no authority or real status outside their party hierarchy. I mean, the fact is that I was elected not because people in their tens of thousands thought I was a wonderful human being. I was elected because I was the Labour candidate, and I still am. That is thoroughly bad, because they are entirely beholden to their party for whatever they are, and they have no authority to set against party discipline. And therefore, what does an ordinary backbencher do uh, in the governing party when they feel that they have been lied to as a member, uh, as a, a member of the Parliamentary Labour Party. And the only way to succeed uh, is to incur the patronage of the Prime Minister. The carrot, the power of patronage, of course, in, in the House of Commons. If one wants to be a minister, uh, you keep your uh, copybook uh, clean and tidy. The only way you're going to get that um, is by effectively um, abnegating your responsibility to control the Prime Minister. You can, and sometimes should do it, and I have done it often enough. But I, you know, how I, many times have you um, voted against the government? Um, I voted against the government on Iraq. Karen actually voted only for amendments for the motion to go to war. On what was considered the actual vote for war, Karen abstained. Now over forty other Labour MPs did this too, and a cynic may say this was probably seen as a compromise with the whips, so MPs could tell the public they had voted against the war, whilst not actually threatening their party's parliamentary majority or their own career prospects. We're not electing individual members of parliament with their own consciences anymore, but voting for, effectively, uh, party automata. I really do need to be convinced that there is evidence that people deliberately... Lie. Lie. Welcome to the Ministry of Truth. Don't come this puritanical thing with me, young man. <laughs> <laughs>